Hey guys, coming up in this video, we have this battery from PowerWin. This is a new on the market company and they have asked me to showcase their battery. So this battery here, they're gonna be putting on the market at an opening price of $239. So let's take a closer look at this battery and see if it's worth your money. So this is a 12 volt, 100 amp hour battery or 1,280 watt hours. This is gonna be great for all of your off-grid solar needs. This could also run a trolling motor. You could series these up to make a golf cart battery. The applications are vast. Taking a look at the front of the battery, we have rather nice graphics here. We have the PowerWind label, 100 amp hour, 12.8 volt, 1,280 watt hours. On the top of the battery, we have our terminal posts up here that are epoxied in. And on the bottom here, we have different voltages to series up your battery. So we have the voltages for 12 volt, 24, 36, and 48. We have the temperature, which you can charge the battery. And we have multiple warnings as far as do not disassemble, which we are gonna ignore for this video. Taking a look at the provided user manual, we have 100 amp hour, 12.8, 14.6 for the charge, 10 volt for the discharge, we have a maximum charging continuous of 100 amps, which is rather high, which is nice. We have a continuous discharge of 100 amps. We have 200 amps of surge for five seconds. That's pretty high. And we have our temperatures and we have our safety protections, which is overcharge, over discharge, over current and short circuit. And on the back side of the manual, we have recommended connections for paralleling 12 volt batteries and the package contents and different cautions. And something to note, we have a warranty. Our company provides customers the warranty of 12 months from the date of purchase. So we have a one year warranty. So let's charge this battery up and perform our capacity test. But first let's see how many volts the battery arrived with. So we have 13.31 volts, which is perfect. We're now gonna charge this up. Let's put a charger on it. And here for my charger, I'm gonna be using a progressive dynamic charger. This is one you would normally see inside of a trailer. Okay, and it is now time for the capacity test of the power win. So I have my tester hooked up. We're gonna pre-charge the capacitors, hit the breaker, and we are sitting around 13.64 volts. So that's perfect. We can turn on our inverter. And then let's add a load. Okay, and the loads come on now, and we're at about 44.59, 44.6, and still rising a little bit, 44.8 amps, 44.9 amps. So this test is roughly gonna take, you know, around maybe two hours in a little bit so I'll be back with the results once the test is concluded and we will see if we get our 100 amp hours out of this battery. Okay and the discharge test is done and we literally just passed. We have 100.245 amp hours out of the 100 amp hour battery so this test is a pass. Next let's tear this battery apart and see what kind of BMS and cells they're using inside and how it's all wrapped together. And with the power of film I've got it open. So right away we can see we have hydraulically crimped lugs with fire protective sleeve and a couple of conductors for the positive and the negative. And we are glued on to the terminal posts here for extra security. And we can see the cells in here. Actually, let's zoom this in. So this battery is actually put together a little differently. We have the cells right here. We have some high density foam in order to keep the pack in. And we have the BMS next to the case. So let's try and pull this out so we can get a closer look at these cells. Ooh, and that BMS seems to be taped stuck inside of there. And that BMS is in there really well. Let's see if I can leave that in there. I really like to see what type of BMS that is. 
Okay, it is getting rather difficult to try and remove the BMS. As you can see there, I'm starting to dent up that plate, which is glued onto the side of the case. So if I can get in here, this is the BMS. You can see the heat sink, and we have all our terminals screwed in. Bounce lead cables are up here. So I need to be careful with this pack on pulling on those bounce lead cables. But I have enough of this pack out that I can see what we're working with here. So on the bottom we have high density foam as well as they have glued it. Uh, we have some fish paper here covering the terminals and we can see that we have laser welded cells. We actually have something different. There's a tab here that's uh, kind of laser welded on. You see that a lot when people are putting together uh, nickel magnesium cobalt cells. And uh, what that is, is it's just a little probe and they tack it. So that's different. You don't usually see that very often. And that is right onto the bus bar. We have laser welded terminal posts, as well as we have our QR code. And every cell has, looks like epoxy board in between every cell, which is great. I do not see a low temperature sensor, so this battery does not have low temperature protection. Let's see if I can't see what type of cells these are. Okay, so we're going to try and scan this Q. Oh, right away. Manufacturer unknown. Not very much information. Let's try a different QR code. And again, we have some unknown information. The cells look like they were manufactured rather recently. Uh, I'll take a picture of the QR code. Okay, so I'll put a picture of the QR code up on the screen if you guys want to research into the cells. So we have our vents. Everything looks pretty clean. I would like to know what size conductors these are. This is a number eight. So we have two number eight conductors on the positive and two number eight conductors on the negative. And everything looks clean. Um, there's no temperature sensor for me to test. So all in all, it looks like a pretty good battery. Uh, the bus bars, I would like to see something with a little hump in it, like I've said in a few of my other previous videos, just for expansion and contraction, not to put any pressure on these posts. As that happens, uh, we're taped up. If low temperature protection is an issue for you, uh, you may wanna look into finding a battery that has that, but if it's not an issue or you're gonna set it up in your system yourself, you can use this battery. Outside of that, uh, let's put it back together. I want to put a heavy charge onto this and see what happens with the temperature. So I'm going to set that up and I'll be right back. Okay, so now I have the battery hooked up. This is a 45, 45 amp and this is a 30 amp charger. So let's run the two of them into the battery at the same time. Okay, let's see how many amps we've got. And now I have 73 amps roughly going into the battery. So that is gonna be maxing out what this can do. This is rated for 100 amps. So let's leave that run. And uh, I'll periodically check the heat and report back. Okay, so I've been running this charge for a while now. And you can see the top of the post on the cells is 37 degrees Celsius. This one over here is 36. Cells aren't heating up. Got about 34.8. Even the BMS is staying rather cold. So you can see there about 35. So all in all, this is taking the uh, 75, 76 amp continuous charge. Something I've noticed is this Google mini speakers at 40 degrees. So I might actually just get rid of that. I never use it. Hey Google, why are you so hot? Some of my data centers run as hot as 35 degrees Celsius. Well, that's gonna wrap it up for this power wind battery. Uh, it did pass all my tests. I'm now charging it with about 75, 76 amps. Seems to be taking it like a champ. Doesn't seem to be any issues with this battery. Uh, I would recommend it. So I'll leave links in the description below. Check them out, see what you think new battery on the market to go along with many others. So as always, thank you for watching. Bye.